red flags being frantically waved as we go back to the leader, Alan Moffat in car 43, 43 years of age from Melbourne. Touring car champion in 73, 6 and 7. Stephen Harrington back out there circulating again in car number 4 after replacing that rear wheel. 4.6 seconds the gap, Alan Moffat to the big block. 5.01 seconds back to third position. Alan Grice. As Brock rounds up Grice's teammate, Harrington. There's Grice. Jones now coming out of the slipstream and going for the brakes. This is the sort of pressure that Alan Grice just doesn't need from someone who's not in major championship contention. by himself so that's good news for Mike Bergman he's okay but what a horrifying minute he would have spent inside that motor car nothing worse than being upside down in a motor car with petrol leaking and not knowing how you're going to get out flag marshals and the fire marshals quickly in attendance and it's a credit to them one of the significant things of this so far has been after all of the teams had planned to use their second drivers so carefully, Stephen Harrington, Greg Hansford, Fred Gibson, none of it's come to fruition. It's this man here, Alan Moffat, who set the pace so very early, something that we haven't seen at the other rounds, as John pointed out before. And you know, one wonders just what's going to happen now with new touring car regulations when they get to the Endurance Championship, just what Alan Moffat is capable of with an engine that will produce something like an extra 30-odd brake horsepower. Allegations have already been made against Alan Moffat that he's been foxing in earlier rounds, backing off in the hope finally that people would recognise that he needed his 13B engine. Now he leads and leads, certainly not comfortably because they're both under the lap record and both going as hard as they can, but he certainly leads by almost five seconds from Peter Brock. I think it's been a marvellous achievement uh, from Peter Brock as well after having a pretty sour sort of a wake up midway through this season to uh, get the Commodore competitive. It was Alan Grice in fact there in shot who was really starting to uh, to worry the Marlboro Hall the other team and they've got back out and they tested very hard at Calder and they've brought the Commodore up to the absolute 100% limit. John Harvey, Larry Perkins, Peter Brock all saying that they can't get one more tenth out of that motor vehicle. Rocky says it's the best he's ever had it and he just can't catch that Mazda. It's interesting, those two drivers with three touring car championships apiece and overseas credits to their name. They've got uh, many, many state and national titles. And this season, 1983, could well be a decider between the two of them on paper. With Moffat just sneaking ahead now with the extra touring car championship. That's if he can get it. Earlier, Bob Vincent spoke to Alan Moffat. moment for you as Alan Moffat now slams down the main straight picking up fifth gear in the little Mazda 960 kilograms it weighs and in fact I put the hypothesis to the Confederation of Australian Motorsport slight, uh, shortly before we uh, before the start of the race that would Moffat be capable of ballasting himself up to 1200 kilograms minimum weight to allow him the bigger the bigger wheels and tires the answer was, uh, no, he's not allowed to. He can go over his minimum weight any time he likes, but the size of his rear rims will be judged on his minimum racing weight of 960 kilograms, so he may not have any more than the 10-inch rear wim, rims. And now we've got the interview with Alan Moffat. 
Alan Moffat, after a great practice session in the second session yesterday, are you reasonably confident? Well, you can never be reasonably confident in this business, uh, Bob. Uh, I'm happy with our warm-up run this morning. Uh, I'd love it to have been a little bit longer. I think one of these days uh, some of the organizers of these races will uh, understand how critical it is for us to have a few laps. And uh, the overseas patterns uh, set the trend and uh, everybody goes out for an hour on the Sunday morning and really gets themselves set up. I think under the circumstances with the track being so messy, and by messy I mean sort of watery, damp and gritty, uh, we were happy with our time yesterday, but it was rather novel running around with our lights on in the last qualifying session last night. What about uh, the Iron Park Circus? Is that going to change your tactics at all for this round? My tactics will be the same as they were at Surface Mint. I will do my very best, and being on the front row, I'll try and get the lead. I would expect both the Holdens to pass me on about the first lap or at least the halfway through the second lap. And uh, we've only got one objective today, and that's to uh, beat the Datsun. Moffat at the moment certainly doing that. He's beating the Datsun and the Commodore and every other vehicle in the race with 10 laps to go. Round 7 of the Touring Car Championship faced with a fairly complex problem in the upcoming round of the Touring Car Championship because he's had an offer from Mazda International to drive at the Le Mans 24-hour race. And it's going to be an interesting decision that Alan Moffat will make as to which way he should go, whether he should pursue the Touring Car Championship or go overseas and further enhance his reputation as we watch Alan Grice and Barry Jones continuing their battle in third and fourth. between the drivers in first and second position is now seeming to consolidate just a little, 4.85 seconds. Moffat either deciding that he's far enough in front or Rock having found a second win. And second to third, Grice. 